Hey guys, what's going on? Caden Cleveland here with the Oklahoma Senate, and you're joining us for another episode of Budget Breakdown. Of course, just like every week, we are with Senator Roger Thompson, our Appropriations Chair here in the Senate. So, Senator, um, last week you gave us a great update on where everything is at in the budgeting process. Uh, this week, we've been getting a lot more questions about something you hinted on very quickly last week, right. uh, but we're getting more questions on the, the rainy day fund. And uh, one, what exactly this fund is, and then two, what the plan is for, the, uh, for this fund moving forward. So I'll turn it over to you there and let you kind of walk us through what, the, uh, what, what this fund is and what the plan is for it. Very good. Thanks for dropping by again. Absolutely. You know, we need to be saving for the state of Oklahoma, yeah. and we've been through some hard times. And uh, while we hope we're in good times and hard times and never come back, right. our history tells us that we go up and down. Yeah. So what do we do for the future? And so there is a constitutional fund called the Rainy Day Fund. Okay. And so constitutionally, we put money in there whenever we were over the 100% estimate. Okay. And so what we would have, we would have a, a, an estimate of revenue. And uh, that estimate of revenue that the Board of Equalization has given us, right. and I've discussed that, we can appropriate 95% of that estimate. Okay. And so this pays the bills, gives us a 5% gap between the 95 and the 100. Okay. Now, so when we look at the 100% estimate that comes in, anything that is over that goes into the rainy day fund. Now, is that just an automatic thing where yes. that money just goes straight in there? Exactly. Gotcha. Okay. And so it goes in. Now, constitutionally, this is capped at 15% of the general revenue fund. Okay. And so uh, whatever we budgeted this year, uh, that is the cap. So we're going into this year with $451 million already in the fund. Really? We're, we're running at about 106% this year above the estimate. So that gives us the 6% that goes directly into this rainy day fund, which is the $451 million. Uh, that's, that that's the present balance. Gotcha. Okay. And so we anticipate that we're going to add this year, at the end of the fiscal year, another $400 million into that account will give us $851 million. Gotcha. Now, if I take the 15%, mm -hmm. I come down here, that 15% number is seven hundred and. Uh, 878 million. And so we're at 851. This caps us out at 15% by the Constitution. Great. And so you can see we're at about 27 million and we'll be capped out. So the question comes what happens when we cap out the rainy day fund at 15%? Right. It flows right back into the general revenue fund. Really? Now, what we also have created just a number of years ago is the budget stabilization fund. Well, in the budget stabilization fund, it's a whole new savings account. And we're, we're looking at how that's going to work. Okay. That is a five-year rolling average of our gross production taxes on oil and gas, and then plus our uh, corporate tax. And so those, uh, again, all on a five-year average. Right. And then we take that average, and it goes into that savings account. And so we want to make sure that we don't save more money than we need. Now, here's the question. How, how do we get to this money in the rainy day fund? Right. There's only three ways that you can access this money. And again, this is all by constitution, not by statute. Okay, gotcha. And so we have then a revenue failure. And so revenue failure is the, the point that we have a 95% estimate, and yet our revenue may be coming in at 93%, gotcha. or it might be coming in at 80%. Then we're having a revenue failure. Gotcha. Which yeah. means, sorry to kind okay. of recap, so the estimated revenue, the, the, uh, the, the Board of Equalization right. estimate that right. they have at the beginning of the year, Maybe a little bit high, right? So you have a revenue failure. That's right. Gotcha. And, and so we're coming in below the ninety-five percent estimate. Okay. Now, when that happens, and we start coming in, we can come over here and we can withdraw at that point three eighths of the this fund, whatever's in the fund. We can go up with three eighths of it. Okay. To go back into our general revenue fund. Gotcha. Now, also, let's say this year we've got a, a good number. Next year, our revenue comes in lower than the revenue this year. Okay. Then we can also do the same three eights. Gotcha. So that's number one, number two, revenue failure or uh, our next year's board of equalization number is less than this year. Gotcha. Okay. Now, the only other way you can access that is for an emergency. And so we hope we don't have any of those. Yeah. But let's say we have some sort of a tornado that comes through. Right. We have to spend a lot of money and we can go back in in the event of an emergency and we can access one fourth of it with a two-thirds vote wow. uh, to be okay. able to do it. And so the restrictions of getting to this money right. are very high. So it seems to me like, one, this is the constitutionally provided kind of savings account right, for right. the state, right? And then you mentioned the other savings account that's uh, being developed. Right. What's the name of it? Yeah, it's the budget stabilization. Gotcha. 
So the savings accounts are there, mm -hmm. and we're looks like we're in a position this year with the revenue, and we're, you said we're operating about 106% right, right. to where we're going to be able to put away a good sum of money for, I guess, a rainy day That's in the right. future. That's exactly right. Gotcha. But keep in mind also that Governor Stead is saying he wants to save $200, uh, $200 million. That is not this number. Okay. So Governor Stead wants us to look at all the agencies that we have and our regular money that we have coming in in the general revenue fund. Right. He said, let's make sure we're only spending the taxpayers' dollars where it needs to be spent. Right. And let's see if we can save $200 million okay. that we can also put back, not just for rainy days, but we put back into a budget stabilization fund gotcha. or somewhere because we know there will be a downturn in the economy. Right. And so I appreciate his leadership and looking forward. I appreciate Protein Treat saying we're going to make sure that we're going to have enough money in the future so that we don't have these big dips as we've had in times past. Love it. And that's still something that's obviously in the works and trying to get all those numbers put together, correct? Uh, that's right. Now, awesome. you know, the Pro Tem Treat has instructed me to make sure that we've got money and savings, make sure that we're saving money out Love of the budget, it. and make sure we're not wasting taxpayers' money. That's my job as corporation chair. Love that. Senator, thank you so much for walking us through that. We've been getting a lot of questions, as I said, about yeah. the rainy day fund and what exactly this is and how the plan is, what that is moving forward. Uh, brief recap, it looks like uh, this $400 million is great news to be yes, able to put is. that away into the rainy day fund. Exactly. Awesome. We're estimating $851 million going into it. And as I said, we hit 878. That caps us out at 15%. flows right back into the rainy. Love that. Thank you so much for walking us through that. You guys, good. thank you so much for, uh, for just joining us. Learn more about the budgeting process. Uh, and if you do have any questions about the rainy day fund or any other questions about the, uh, the budgeting process, feel free to comment down below and we'll be sure to answer next week. So, Senator Thompson, Sounds good. Else? No, sir. Awesome. Always a pleasure to have thank you in so office. Much. Guys, thank you so thank much. You. We'll see you next week. Bye.